This video will demonstrate the removal and replacement of the bearing blocks and rails on the desktop CNC's shipped prior to August 2017. These techniques are similar but not identical on tools from August 2017 and afterwards. The blocks are quite robust and do not often need to be replaced, but it is a good skill to know how to check and service the blocks if needed. For this demonstration, I won't be replacing the blocks and rails with a whole new set. Rather, I'll show the process needed to remove, check, and replace with the existing set. The only tool needed is a 3mm hex key. I like to have a container for the screws nearby, and having an extra set of hands can also help. Starting on the Y-axis gantry leg without the VFD mounted on it, we will check the blocks one at a time. Removal is the same on both sides. The block on this gantry leg, closest to the front of the tool, will not come off the rail easily, as the proximity switch prevents our ability to slide the block directly off the rail. So we will need to support this side of the gantry and remove both blocks together. I will demonstrate this process shortly. First, remove the four screws for the far block. Once all the screws are out, the block will slide freely on the rail, and this is one of the best ways to check the block. Slide the block back and forth and feel how it slides on the rail. It should slide smoothly with no grinding or hangups. If we suspect there is an issue with the block, it can slide directly off the back side of the rail. Be sure to slowly slide it straight off the rail. If it does not come off straight or catches, you could pop some of the bearings out of the block. The block can now be manually inspected and cleaned if needed. Using something like our 3mm hex key, we can move and manipulate the races that the bearings move along. A normal race will appear to be missing about one bearing. This gap is required for the block to function, so don't worry about the gap. If it appears bigger than you see here, about one bearing worth, it is likely an issue with the bearing block, and it may need to be replaced. When manually inspecting the bearing races and bearings, we want to move the balls all around the race and feel for any roughness or spots where they might get stuck. There are two races on the top and two on the bottom. The second race on each side can be hard to see. If there's any debris, the best practice is to wipe down the races with a clean, lint-free cloth using a very small amount of 3-in-1 or other light machine oil. The screw plug seen here is the oiler port for the bearings. This should stay in place during operation. For the most current recommendations on maintaining the oiler port, refer to our maintenance guide for the desktop tools. A link to that guide can be found in the description of this video. To reinstall the block, line the channel directly up to the rail and slowly glide the block into position without force. Be sure to go as straight as possible onto the rail to avoid ending up with bearings all over our work surface. Checking the second bearing block first requires supporting the gantry to prevent it from falling once the blocks are both free. To do this, we use some solid block or other flat and sturdy material. Make sure it is stable enough to support a few hundred pounds, especially if removing both sides at the same time. Ensure there's no room for wobble and now remove the screws for the second block with the 3mm hex key. Loosen all the screws first, then remove them one at a time. The gantry should not shift with the supports in place, and we can now slide this block back and forth to check its motion. Now, to reinstall the bolts, I will use a zigzag pattern to distribute the weight for the first two bolts on each block, then installing the rest. Now to demonstrate the removal and replacement of the x-axis blocks and rails. To accomplish this, we first need to remove the cutting head assembly. On this desktop 24x18 model, I have a router that I can simply remove from the mount. I will link the information on how to remove a spindle in the description below. The screws holding the z-axis assembly to the bearing block sometimes can be difficult to see, but I will show how we can find and remove all of them by moving the z-axis up and down a small amount. There are four screws for each block, and they are directly behind this blue plate. With the z about halfway up, accessing the screws is quite easy. You can move the tool via the keypad with power onto the tool, then power it off after moving it, 
or with power off to the tool, it is possible to slowly move the Z up or down with even pressure by hand. Now to remove the screws. Having your container nearby now is useful for holding our screws as we remove them. Once the last screw is removed, the bottom bearing block is freed and can be slid back and forth along the rail for testing its effectiveness. If the block does not have to be removed and replaced, reinstall it now so the Z is better supported for the next step. Otherwise, now the Z is no longer well secured and we have to be careful not to hit it or push on it too forcefully. And remember that once we remove the second set of screws, it will drop. Before removing the second set of screws, let's remove the two screws holding the Z to the X-axis motor's anti-backlash nut. Once the two screws are removed, the Z car will now move freely on the last bearing block. This is an easy way to test the X-axis blocks without removing too many parts. Now to remove the block, we need to move the Z-axis down by either powering the tool on and moving it via the software, or very carefully pushing it downwards with power off. Power off the tool again, and we can now remove the remaining four screws. After removing two of the screws, as we remove the third, the Z will shift, so you may want your helper to hold the Z now. Remove the last screws and we are now free to place the Z behind the gantry, or to remove the two screws holding the electrical chain to the Z, allowing us to set the Z axis aside. It is good now to note here that the Z bearing blocks almost certainly don't need replacing, but if you suspect issues, Checking the Z now with it in its disassembled state is very easy. Now, if we need to remove the blocks for cleaning and replacing, we cannot slide them directly off this rail, so we will need to remove the rail first to replace them. To do this, we remove the 13 screws holding the rail in place. As the last screws are removed, be sure to hold the rail securely to avoid dropping it. Now we can remove, inspect, clean, or replace the bearing blocks as before. To reinstall the rail, first carefully pre-install the bearing block on the rail. The rails are press fit into this machined groove on the gantry so be sure to hold the rails straight onto the groove. Making sure it is pressed into this groove will ensure the rail is straight when installed. Now install the rails by starting with the two end screws for support, then install the rest of the screws loosely before tightening them down. Once the bearings and rail are in place, we can reinstall the Z assembly. You'll now need to move the Z up and down a few times to get the screws all in place. I recommend starting with the top bearing block screws, then the bottom bearing block screws, then lastly install the two screws for the anti-backlash nut bracket.